If you had to think of an artificially intelligent toy, what would you imagine it as? Would it look like this? Like this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Or this? Well, the answer is none of that. Here's the cheapest and not surprisingly the most common toy in the world. Yes, this toy comes in different colors. The chances that you're going to get one of these in your lifetime are pretty big. And it's also pretty likely that the toy you're getting is going to have the same skin color as you. Uh, because you will most likely favor your skin color over other skin colors. This uh, AI toy is in fact free, but you can just buy one on eBay, not yet at least. In order to get one of these toys, you actually have to wait for about 9 months in order to order, or rather pre-order, one of these kick-ass toys, you have to have a sexual intercourse. This is how it's done. Uh, if you are a male and have a penis, you need to get it on with a female. If you are a female and have a vagina, then you have to get it on with a male. Regardless of which gender you are, you can still get one of these toys and claim one as your own for life, which is a pretty good deal. If you don't know what I mean by getting it on, please refer to these easy to follow instructions on how to build one of these toys. If you get lucky, you might actually get two or even more of these toys in one sweep. If the female manufacturing these toys gets lucky, that is. And uh, the two toys that come out might actually look alike. Isn't that incredible? You might confuse one with another from time to time, but the toys are programmed to be smart enough to know the difference between each other. Just make sure that each of your twin toys gets exactly the same thing at all times or the toys might get angry and rebel. Even if you are a female without a male, you can go to a place called Sperm Bank and use some of the semen from an unknown male to create your own toy. That way you wouldn't have to share your own toy with anyone and it would be all yours to have. You would still have to wait about 9 months though. If you are a white female, you will most likely ask for the semen that comes from a white male. That's just how it goes. This is also a solution if you cannot manufacture your own toys. Statistics have shown that 1 in 5 people contemplate suicide whilst undergoing treatment that would allow them to manufacture the artificial intelligent toy. So make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, this is a no laughing matter because apparently more than 90% of people on this planet are absolutely obliged to manufacture at least one of these toys in their lifetime. No exceptions, unless you are gay, lesbian, infertile, or dead. And even then, there could be some exceptions. Unfortunately, in the United States alone, 6 million people cannot manufacture these incredibly advanced and wanted toys. We can only pray to our almighty God presiding over this universe that they can find a way to manufacture a toy or two or at least adopt one and make sure that the adopted toy manufactures even more toys. Uh, one in seven couples in the world have problem manufacturing a toy, and over the last 30 or 35 years, the sperm count in an average American male has actually decreased by a few percentages. So stop watching that TV, gents. It's also right in your brain, which you need, I guess. So it's essential to stock up on more semen and freeze it for future generations, should humanity become less and less infertile. So every time you waste sperm, you are essentially murdering toys and possibly taking away the joy that comes from playing with these toys from the future generations. That's why we fight to ban internet pornography and any other type of pornography that would have our young generation waste their building blocks for toys instead of using those blocks to have more of their own toys. So, what's the catch, you might ask? Well, like we said before, the toys come free, even though you have to wait for one. The thing is that if you are a female, the older you get, the less chances there are that the toy you manufacture will come out healthy, strong, and intelligent. Your toy might actually come out deformed, malfunctioning, or even dead. No returns, sorry. You'll just have to try again and see what happens. Uh, this great game of dice comes at no charge, either monetarily or ethically. It's just inconvenient and boring to dispose of the terminated toy and start anew. We are grateful to God that he has endowed us with the ability to produce these AI toys as many times as we want. So make sure to produce as many of these toys before you hit that dreadful 40. You don't have to worry about having to feed these toys. It will all play out in the end. After all, every toy is a gift from our almighty God. He can't possibly turn his back on them, can he? Even if we were to look real hard, I doubt that we will find a single starving or suffering toy in the world. 
We have McDonald's, and McDonald's makes it easy and accessible to eat dead animals almost everywhere in the world. So there's no excuse for these manufacturers of toys to neglect their toys in such disgusting manner. It is also good to have as many of these toys as possible because that way more of them would be able to help around the house. The work and sweat in the field and walk miles for dirty water and gather the harvest and attract those disgusting flies, keep those flies away from us and do house chores and spend one third of their life studying, working or trying to survive, spending another third of their life sleeping and finally spending the last third of their life trying to find meaning and value of their existence while attempting to avoid unnecessary inconvenience and burdens of being hungry, thirsty, angry, depressed, irritated, sick, cold, hot, tired, crippled, alone, having cancer, AIDS, leukemia, and other nasty diseases. Silly them! If only they could be manufactured with the already internal knowledge that they will live happily ever after with God and heaven after they decay and die. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, we are constantly working on being able to input that knowledge of heaven and eternal grace before the toy enters its final stage of manufacturing and if we fail to do so we feed that knowledge to our toys as soon as they're able to understand our words we feed them that knowledge through our language our holy books the holy days and holidays through explaining the simple material things through contrived complex spiritual second dimension secret explanations Please be sure to shield your toys from those pesky, angry, and loud atheists who would like nothing better than to strip away the knowledge of our eternal life and our everlasting bliss with God from us and our toys. We cannot allow those atheists to mess up with the programming of our toys. That's why it's essential to program your newly manufactured toy to praise our Lord in heaven. But make no mistake, no matter how well you program your toy to follow your religion, that programming is never completely sound since those angry atheists always come up with some way to mess up the programming of our toys and bring them over to their dark side. If you don't want to wait for a whole nine months to get one of these artificial intelligent toys, then you can get one for free from an orphanage or a poor country. An orphanage provides toys that come in different colors, shapes and sizes. You can choose any of these toys and take them home to live with you. If your ego actually allows you to go ahead and get one of these used toys instead of, instead of waiting for your own, then we can only wish you luck because producing your own toy and overpopulating the world even more is what God wants us to do. Hence he said, be fruitful and multiply. Regardless, our studies have shown that an overwhelming amount of people choose to manufacture their own toys and wait for nine months instead of getting the already existing albeit used toy in an orphanage or in some poor country. Our studies have also indicated that people prefer to have their own toys because they simply prefer their own genes and ethnicity to other genes and ethnicities. Women want their own toy because they want unconditional love. Men want their own toy because they want to perpetuate their face, their genes and their last name. People want to live forever through their offspring and that is completely understandable and justifiable. Both males and females want their own toy because they want the toy to take care of them when they are old. They want the toy to support them financially as well as spiritually. Financially, you want to believe that your toy will be a rich and influential person. We are still working on the statistics that will indicate whether your toy will in fact be a rich, famous and influential person or a regular or even miserable toy. But we would certainly like to think that the odds are in your favor. So cross your fingers, roll the dice and hope for the best. Just go with what you feel in your heart and we are sure that you will find the right answer. In conclusion, we would like to present you with the easy algorithm that your toy is going to live by once it's produced. Your toy will be brought into this world through a beautiful and blissful experience of being shoved out of your vaginal canal. This experience will not traumatize your toy because we have programmed the toy to not remember that stressful moment of manifestation. Next, your toy is going to go through a few years of needing and wanting and pooping. At first, the toy is going to need food and comfort, it will cry at nights and be obnoxious most of the time, but don't worry, it's all part of the plan. 
Next, your toy is going to grow a little and will start developing uh, more various and sophisticated needs and wants. These needs and wants are probably going to be of material nature. Make sure that you attempt to satisfy as many of these needs and wants, so we recommend working two jobs or working double, um, and having your apartment or house goes without saying. We do not recommend growing your toys if you can't afford to buy food for yourself. That should be a no-brainer, folks. Next, if you live in a developed country, your toy is going to have to get some education about the world, and that is what the schools are for. Make sure to not over-educate your toys about reality, because they can get the wrong and damaging ideas in their heads, such as uh, life is hard, life is miserable, and we are mortal beings, and there's no grand plan, there's simply no happily ever after and when i die i will rot in the ground that is what atheists teach their kids so beware this process of education is going to last for a good couple of decades and sometimes even longer so make sure to program your child to willfully and happily get up in the morning every day to spend a third of its day learning about the beauty of the world Next, your toy is going to have to get a job while needing and wanting. Sometimes that can happen while the toy is still attending an educational institution. So make sure to program your toy to enjoy working its job, no matter how hard, low-paying, humiliating, or aggravating it may be. Always remember that if your toy has a job, it means that your toy will be able to help you out financially. If your toy doesn't get to be rich, famous, or influential, then always remember that the world always needs janitors. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. Next, your toy is going to look for some significant other toy while needing and wanting. No matter how many of these short-term or long-term encounters your toy has, they will most likely eventually re result in a marital bond of some sort and that is the time for your toy to manufacture their own toy or toys or get one in an orphanage or a poor country you should encourage your toy to produce a toy of its own uh, that way you can either be a grandmother or a grandfather which means that you get to play with small toys since your own toy grew up and it's out of your control or influence if that happens, please feel free to exercise whatever influence you have into molding the toy of your, of your own toy into whatever you wish it to be. Next, your toy is going to start growing older while still working, needing, and wanting, and consuming. Please forgive us for referring to this needing, wanting, and consuming concept. But please understand, we had to implement these desire mechanisms to keep your toys in the game of life. Had we not implemented these desire mechanisms, then your toy would have no reason to go on living and provide you with an offspring of their own. As your toy grows older, weaker and sicker, so will you. Your toy will start losing your hair, teeth, stamina, energy, sex, drive, enthusiasm for life. The taste buds of your toy will decrease each year. Your toy will be more susceptible to getting sick, blah blah blah. Eventually your toy will be terminated. But don't worry! Our Heavenly Father is most likely to have to take you into his arms before he takes your toys. So when your life runs out, just wait a little and your toy will show up to spend an eternity with you in heaven. If your toy is terminated at an old age, then your toy will too be as old as you are in heaven. And then you will be able to keep sharing stories and playing bingo together for all eternity. If your toy is terminated while it's about six months old, then it will be forever small and cute in heaven. And you will be able to rock it in its cradle and play with it for all eternity. We thank you for reading our manual on how to create your own artificially intelligent toy. Be fruitful and multiply.